Hi, I'm Master Sergeant Dale Barton. Today we're going to be talking about clarinets. A lot of little emergency repairs, tricks and tips. First we're going to talk about what not to do. First thing we're going to cover today is things that I typically see that either you don't want to do or you shouldn't do or aren't the best thing to do. One thing you're going to encounter all the time is stuck joints. The instrument just doesn't come apart. Uh, people do a lot of bending trying to get things apart. If you can't get it apart, leave it. I'll show you some ways of getting them apart, but anytime you force something, it's a bad thing. You're better off to deal with it, uh, not be able to put it back in its case, than to, to, than to damage it. Joints, joint corks are always a problem. They either fall off, they get too loose, whatever. Um, a lot of people will use tape on those, and tape works. Uh, it's just not the best uh, best thing. It's difficult to get exactly how much you need. Then you're back to the stuck joint situation. The player never gets around to getting it fixed and then it becomes a gummy mess to remove later on. Uh, not the best solution. Uh, another one is just strips of paper. Again, it'll work. Not the best solution. I will show you your favorite friend to keep in your case for all of your major cork issues. Uh, if a cork has come loose, another major issue, super glue is one of my favorite products in the world, but there are ways to do it. And one of the number one things is never use super glue out of its container onto whatever it is that you're gluing. People are always, they squeeze it too hard, it runs all over the place. It's not the prime thing to use on corks. It dries very hard, you lose the resilience that way. White glues, Elmer's type glue is really has no place in band instrument repair. It takes very long to dry. It doesn't hold things very well. It's a problem. Uh, rubber bands, again, they have a, a, a place, but the big fat rubber bands like these are really, can be really difficult. Sometimes they exert way too much force. Uh, it's really difficult to get them on without affecting keys that you don't need them on. Again, you forget to take them off, you've got sticky residue, they harden, they don't come off, they leave gummy stuff that you have to then fix later on. The rubber bands also, especially on a silver plated key, will tarnish quite badly under, under the rubber, uh, wherever they're at. So you want to be real careful about that sort of thing. Uh, another thing that I see all of the time in the center joint of the instrument, there's some adjustments there. These are always kanked up from somebody using a regular hardware store style of pliers that uh, have really heavy serrations on here. So if you have to use that kind of thing, we're going to line the jaws of these, keep them safe, or I'll show you more gentle ways of fixing and adjusting things without breaking out the pliers. Oh, here we go. Your trusty lighter. This is going to be the thing you hear all the time. My pad fell out, who's got a lighter? Uh, lighters are all well and good, but typically somebody's heating up a pad, they've got this lighter right underneath it, all of the flame is going this way, it's burning the wood, it's melting the plastic, it's uh, frying the pads, the felts, everything around it. So there's ways of doing this uh, that, I'll, that I'll cover, but it's, it, all of it has to do with how you use it. Also, if you need a lot of heat, you'll end up burning your thumb as the, uh, as the lighter heats up. Candles can work. Typically though, a paraffin candle, as it burns, has a very, very smoky residue that it leaves. Uh, it's not the end of the world. It is something that you can clean off, but it's just not really what you're going to want to do. Uh, so that's, uh, in, a, in a nutshell, a number of the little things that I typically see. Now, real quick, we were talking about using uh, heat sources. In my shop, I use an alcohol lamp for most for heating pads. It's a real gentle flame. It doesn't smoke. Um, a propane, you know, butane lighter works well. The problem is you can't really hold it too good, and this metal housing gets uh, it gets really hot. So. I had just got some salt shakers because I was going to put some other stuff in them, uh, whichever. But you can, uh, 
and this can be any weighted base. So you'll need to do that and I've got one other quick one other lighter. So you have one lighter, you have to tape the uh, thing shut that allows the propane to flow and then you light this. It didn't stay down. Let's try that again. Okay, we tape down the handle, start it with that one, and now I can have both hands free to do whatever work that I'm doing with the flame. It's real important when you're using a flame to be aware of the direction that the heat, and it's not always where the flame is. There's, there's heat that rises up in here. So even though my flame's only touching here, uh, the heat from that flame goes around the pad and different things. So you always want to direct your heat a little bit towards the, the center so that it goes upward and then deflects away from the pad on the other side and away from the instrument. So that's one of those things. This is okay when you've got an emergency. Just be aware of where you're directing your flame and be aware that if you have to do this for very long, it gets really hot. You can burn yourself pretty badly with it. So if you're in a position to uh, make a little stand, it works exactly the same, almost exactly the same amount of heat as I would have for my alcohol lamp. And, uh, and there you go.